how are you and welcome to the course in this video I'll be covering the actions of firearms so you understand them before you come to my course I'll be covering bolt action rifles I'll be covering a brake action shotgun I'll be covering pump actions lever actions semi-automatic handguns and revolvers and I'll also talk about muzzle loading actions so that way when you come to the course you'll have a bit of knowledge beforehand once I start talking about actions in the course. This is the bolt action system. It's one of the most solid and reliable systems for repeating rifles around for years. The chamber is clear. The magazine is clear. The bolt action works like this. When you push forward, it pushes a round into the chamber, pulling the round from the magazine. When you pull down, it locks, and then you would fire. Lift the bolt, which unlocks the firearm and cocks the firing pin. Extract and eject the cartridge, and then load and lock, fire. That is the bolt action system. This is the lever action system. Been around for many years. When I hold my hand up like this, with the action held tight, it's locked and then it will be ready to fire. When you push your hand forward, it extracts the cartridge from the chamber and then when you go forward as you're pulling forward it lifts a cartridge from the loading gate into the chamber and then loads again and then you would fire extract and cock the firearm and load and lock again the lever action system it's in rimfire 22s it's in centerfire rifles like this and it's also in shotguns This is the pump action system. I work the action back, chamber's clear, no cartridges in the loading gate. When the action gets pumped back on a pump action, it cocks the firing pin, ejects and extracts the cartridge, and then when you're going forward, it picks up a cartridge. See the loading gate lift up? That little loading gate's lifted up. That's lifting the cut loading gate up so the cartridge is up to go in the chamber and then when you go boom that's how the pump action system works this is a pump action shotgun they make pump action rifles in center fire and pump action rifles in rim fire so the pump action has been around for a long time also known as the slide action or the trombone action on some rifles This is known as the semi-automatic action. Action's back, chamber's clear, magazine is clear. How this system works is with the recoil of the cartridge, throws the action backwards and forwards like this. Next shot, bang, bang. As soon as you pull the trigger, the recoil of the cartridge flicks the action back and it goes forward again as this is a inertia driven semi-automatic 22. As it comes back it ejects the cartridge automatically and then it picks up another shell and then goes forward again and so on. That's how the semi-automatic inertia driven system works. Same in a pistol and same in a shotgun. There is um, two different types of um, semi-automatic firearms. This is a gas-operated semi-automatic shotgun. There is inertia, like I was talking about before, and then gas. The difference between inertia and a gas firearm is up here in the barrel. There is a little hole that is drilled in the barrel. 
as the explosion and the gases from the cartridge are going up the barrel, it uses some of those gases through the hole to push a piston here back. That piston works the action of the firearm. So when that piston's back, it works the firearm. Like that. Where an inertia driven gun works off the sheer inertia, the recoil, just like with the 22 before, the action comes back and goes forward again from the recoil of the shell. The pros and cons of inertia versus gas. Inertia is a much more reliable system, less moving parts to clean and wear out, but the downside is you need a heavier cartridge. If you put a light, very light trap load, for example in here, the cartridge won't have enough grunt and when the action comes back, it might only go back three quarters of the way and then go forward again, which means it won't even eject the shell malfunction. Where if you have a heavy cartridge, it'll throw the action right back, flick the shell out and go forward again. The other downside of inertia is the gun has to be firm into your shoulder because when the recoil of the gun, if the whole gun goes back like that, the action's going back with the gun and it won't work. It has to be against your shoulder where with a gas gun, it will work with no matter what shell you put in. You could put a little 21 gram light trap load in. Because there's gas coming, it will always throw that action back. And with a, inertia, uh, with a gas gun, you could hold the gun down like this in one hand and fire it and it will still work because the gas will make it work. That's why the military use gas-operated semi-automatic rifles in their AR-15 platforms because it's very reliable and will work in battle. But there is more moving parts to clean and can go wrong. But not a lot really, but there's just a little bit more cleaning and care with a gas gun over inertia. And a gas gun is always just that little bit heavier than an inertia gun. Both good, both got their pros, both got their cons. This is the straight pull system. It's made specifically for the Australian market because of our firearms laws with semi-automatic and pump action shotguns. It works just like a pump action shotgun, just instead of pumping, you're pulling the action. And that's how the straight pull system works. There's a new system out there called the button release or lever release shotgun. Now in other places of the world, this firearm is sold as a semi-automatic shotgun. It's a Stoger M3000. But it's been modified with the cocking handle for the straight pull. But there's another one that just has the normal handle like an automatic. But when it comes back, instead of going forward again, it'll lock up like that and won't go forward. And you've got to manually hit a lever. So they've put a lever where this release button is here, up here with your thumb. So when you fire it, you just go bang, clunk, bang, clunk, bang, clunk. It's called the lever release shotgun. So there's that one and the straight pull like this. They have done this lever release in rimfire 22s and in centerfire high powered rifles and shotguns. This is the break action shotgun. The brake action system is very reliable and has been around for a very long time. Open the lever, pull the barrels down from the forend and it's open. As you're pulling the barrel down it is cocking the internal firing pins in the receiver and extracting and ejecting the cartridges. You then manually load each cartridge, close the firearm and fire. It's easy as that. Some of the older model shotguns, the safety catch will come on and you have to push it forward on the old side by sides. But with the modern shotgun, as soon as it's closed, it's ready to go. That is the brake action system. Some rifles come in that, especially double barrel rifles that they use for big game shooting because it's a very safe and reliable system 
They use a break action system. Single barrel shotguns, double barrel shotguns, and even triple barrel shotguns come in the break action system. This is a semi-automatic 9mm pistol. The chamber is clear and the magazine is clear. To use the semi-automatic pistol, it just works like all the other guns on inertia. As soon as you pull the action, as soon as you fire the shot, the action will come back, eject the cartridge, forward again. Eject the cartridge, forward again. Bang! Bang! That's exactly how the semi-automatic pistol works, just like the inertia-driven rifle that I showed you just before. Once you've fired, your chamber's clear, and make sure that it's clear. This is the double-action revolver. You load the cartridges in and close the revolver chamber. Double action and single action literally means this. This is single action. You singly cock it each time and fire. Where with double action, you can pull the trigger and fire at the same time. See how it's indexing, going around and then firing. That is the double action revolver. That is a 357 Magnum. They make them in 22 caliber. You can get 44s, 45s, double action revolver. This is the single action revolver. It's a Ruger .22 single six. For the single action, you open the chamber like that. And then you have to physically check each chamber is clear like this. To load the single action revolver, the cartridges go in one at a time, like that. You index the chamber around, another round. Index the chamber around, another round. Then you would close the loading gate, and you'll notice with the single action, I pull the trigger, nothing happens. I have to manually cock it each time to fire it. Cock, fire. Cock, fire. That's how the single action works. Then to unload, once it's empty, open the loading gate, and with this one, you hold it up like that, and there's a little lever here, this ramrod. You push that down, see that come out like that? You knock each cartridge out like that. Every chamber, show every chamber's clear, and then show the range officer that every chamber is clear before you go forward to the firing line. That's the single action revolver. Some semi-automatic pistols are single action and double action as well, like revolvers. This is a muzzle loading revolver, percussion cap, cap and ball. It's in 44 caliber. Put it back to half cock and check all the nipples have no percussion cap on it. And I previously looked, I can see that there's no round ball in each hole, so I know it's clear. To load the percussion cap revolver, it's a slower process. You hold it down like that, and you pour a powder charge in each chamber, like that. Then you'd put a round ball on top of the hole, turn it around here, and this little ramrod gets knocked down. See this? And then that, load, that, that pushes the ball. Like a muzzle loader with the rod, I'm just pushing the ball down into the chamber. Each, each chamber I've got to do that too. Then, I would put the percussion cap, priming caps on each nipple. That's your primer, like inside the cartridge. Then, I highly recommend a little bit of Vaseline or animal fat just smeared over the balls to stop crossovers. Because black powder is so volatile and flammable, when one of these nipples goes off, it can flash over and ignite another chamber, or from the gases coming out here, it can ignite another round from the inside here. And that's how you get a flashover. And that's why we put grease on the end of the holes where the um, 
ball is. And then you cock it and then fire. That's how the percussion cap revolver works and then knock each nipple off and do it all again. And then do all the cleaning that goes with muzzle loading firearms. This is a muzzle loading firearm known as the Brown Bess. It's a flint lock. Works from a piece of flint striking this piece of metal called the prism, pushing sparks into the pan. It was made in 1762. To load the brown bess, you would pull it back to half cock. That's your safety. Then, they'd put the musket on the ground. It's a musket because it shoots a round ball. They'd pull their powder charge in. Then they would put their round ball down and then ram it down all the way. It has to be rammed the whole way down when you load a muzzle loading firearm. Then they'd put their rod back underneath like that. They would cock the hammer back to fully cocked. Pour a bit of powder into the pan and shut the prism down and then fire. And the sparks would ignite the pan and the charge would go off. That's how the percussion cap worked. That is a muzzle loading firearm. Percussion cap's the same to load as the same as a flint lock. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch the videos. They gave you a um, detailed demonstration on how the categories of firearms work. If you have any more questions, I'll answer them happily in the course. I look forward to seeing you all at the course. Thank you.